Good afternoon, everybody. Well, a couple of days ago, people from Nippon Paint told me that you will have at your disposal a stage of 360 degrees. And I said, awful. <laughs> it's terrible, because I'm not a TED talker. And uh, how can I do it? And then I uh, try to practice, you know. Uh, in my room at the hotel, I went around, you know, trying to... <laughs> and I said, oh, oh, I cannot do it. And then I asked to, uh, for this stand. I said, okay, I transform my stage <laughs> into a conventional one. So, because maybe I need my, my papers. Well, uh, before starting, uh, I would like to express my gratitude to Nippon Paint and to Taylor's University for inviting me to this event and especially uh, for giving me my certificate before my speech. It's very safe. <laughs> and, okay, the title of my presentation is Forward and Rewind, and then I will explain what's the relation between the two topics uh, with the Iranian visionary architecture. I would like to start my presentation with telling you a story. I, I remember when I was a child, uh, I was 10 years old, a summer day, I was glued to the television watching with my parents uh, the mission of Apollo 11 uh, to the moon. And I was a, a fan of uh, science fiction novels, and especially uh, the novel by uh, Jules Verne, uh, From the Earth to the Moon. And... Uh, you know, I could find, um, I was fascinated by the fact that Jules Verne, uh, around a century before, was speculating about uh, a manned mission to the moon. With, uh, and I found uh, some similarities between the two stories, you know, the story uh, of Jules Verne and uh, the Apollo 11. Because in both the stories, there were three astronauts on the lunar module, and, uh, well, the trip uh, lasted uh, a few days. And even uh, the, the form of the two spacecrafts were, to some extent, similar. And both lunar modules splashed down in the ocean. So, uh, you know, uh, Jules Verne was a visionary man, and we know that eight of his inventions came through decades later. Electric submarine, newscast, light-propelled spacecraft, lunar modules, skywriting, video conferencing, Tesser, splashdown spaceship. I believe that uh, also the architects can be visionary. We need to be visionary because our buildings are destined to, to stay for a long time. You know, how long can an architect live? Lifespan for a building can be much more than an architect. It means that our built project are destined to last long, longer than us. As a designer, I'm asking myself, how would it be the world at the turn of the century? Well, none of us has a crystal ball, so... But, oh, maybe there is somebody so gifted who can have a vision about the future. But. What saves us as, an archi as architects is that, for us, the uh, future is not just a forecast, it's a project. When in, uh, well, this state is wrong, when in 1671, Newton introduced a differential equation, he could not imagine that this might be used centuries later for modeling the complex uh, behavior of some uh, systems in economy or when the Romans 2,000 years ago built Colosseum for housing the public spectacles. They could not imagine that after 2,000 years, 
the same layout will be used by people for building uh, the modern stadiums. The visionary architecture is the name usually given to architecture which exists only on paper or which has visionary qualities. And I believe that the, the paper architecture is always important and inspiring. Georges Pompidou Center by Richard Rogers and Renzo Piano as an example. As James Barrel stated in his article, Archigram and the Pompidou Center, this project is clearly inspired by the visionary design of Plug-in City by Peter Cook. The fact is that uh, most of the innovative projects are abandoned after the concept stage, but they remain forever on paper and they can be inspiring for the other architects. Well, in a country like Iran, where conservative thinking prevails over belief in new ideas, modern methods and changes, most of the time the visionary architects build much less than the others and sometimes they build nothing. The extreme visionary projects create a new reality that can be solely expressed through hypothetical projects. These are not conceived to be inhabited, and most of the time they are not practically buildable. Schroeder is one of the most influential designers of this genre in Iran. During the 80s, he used to be in the circle of Eisenman, Kipnis, and Libeskind. And then, by beginning of the 90s, he traveled to Iran. His proposal for the development of the Kish Island on Persian Gulf seems more like the scene of a science fiction movie. I work with him on two projects. And due to technical difficulties and huge investment required, None of them became reality. And there are other talented architects in Iran who have built only a few small projects, over hundreds they have designed. And there are other architects that they have built hundreds. But they're not so influential. I believe that a visionary architect has to be so lucky to meet a visionary client as well. And when most likely this doesn't happen, it's a disaster. Ali Reza Taghabani, founder of Next Office, is one of the most famous Iranian architects. In one of his first projects, he had to pay his client in order to finish the unfinished project. So he invested on his project. And although later he achieved to build several small projects, but still the work done by this, let's say that vanguard architects in Iran is nothing comparing with uh, 25 million square meters built every year in Iran by mediocre architects. Well, designing is hard, but educating people to understand and appreciate innovative architecture is even harder. Once Alessandro Scotti, an Italian photographer, told me, you architects, never ask your clients money for the most important part of your uh, services, which is educating and training the clients to understand and appreciate your work. And it's not true that we have to obey the clients. Most of the time, we have to fight and change their mind for achieving the better result. And this is a very difficult task. A friend of mine told me that his client is blaming because he believes the architect is using him as a guinea pig to test the effects of his new ideas on the project. In similar cases, an architect has to do much more than his contractual scope of services. He has to push the boundaries of the collective imagination and convince the people that the new idea is valid. And every innovative idea, as we know, passes through three stages. Rejection, adaptation, and appreciation. 
And an Iranian, an Iranian of design office called Fluid Motion decided to go through all these difficult stages. We all know that mosque is not just a place for addressing a prayer to God. It's a place for tradition and rituals. Because according to Islam, ritual, worship can be done on bare ground with just a sign to show the direction of Mecca. The mosque's symbolic elements, like minaret, dome, porch, prayer hall, arabesque decorations, and so on, they were developed centuries after Prophet. And each culture has its own style of mosque. And what if an architect in the Theocratic Republic of Iran claims that all the mosques built over the centuries were against the genuine spirit of Islam? And he comes with a completely innovative solution for the building, which is supposed to become one of the most important mosques of the capital. We expect, we expect the authorities will reject the project and maybe will suspend his work permit. Well, this is not the case. Fluid motion architects have denied all the liturgical elements of the traditional mosque because considered against the spirit of Islam and they could build their old mosque in the center of the era. This is what I call forward in my speech. I mean the architects who believe in the linear evolution of the civilization, architecture and technology. They follow all the novelties in the fields of theory, philosophy, and this group has a critical approach towards history and adhere to the spirit of time. The architects of this tendency want to recreate everything from scratch and are focused on formal research and experimental geometry rather than language, history and atmosphere. They are in line with the international vanguard movements and believe that functions and language are irrelevant to design. These architects believe the human being can adapt himself to almost any condition and aesthetics. According to them, Architecture should not direct a message or even a meaning. They make extensive use of parametric design and computer-generated forms. Jam Tower and Ava Center in Tehran by Fluid Motion Architects are two examples of forward architecture, what I call forward architecture. New Wave Architects designed a big gym near the highest peak, Mont Damovand, the building features a bouldering hall with a climbing wall, a temporary accommodation zone, and a space for fitness. According to the architect, the design has been inspired by the movements of the Earth's crust and its tectonic forces. Well, the same architect succeeded to build a smaller project, which is a villa in a hilly zone near Tehran. Here, the floors are rotated around the vertical axis to provide variety of views toward the landscape. But the real and dynamic rotation of the residential spaces happens in a famous building by Next Office. The building is conceived as a mechanism of turning boxes that leads the building mass to become open or closed, introverted or extroverted. These changes may occur according to the changing season or to functional scenarios. Although Iran has a long and rich architectural history, it seems strange that we find many creative architects having a conflictual relation to the traditions and to the past, and recklessly believe in Western civilization and its paradigms. I call this attitude nostalgia for the future. Maybe because we have suffered for a long time from exploitation of the history for the propaganda purposes. Rejection of the Western culture was a dominant idea after the Islamic Revolution. And for two decades, the authorities and the public institutions tried to impose the models of Islamic art and architecture. The result was catastrophic. The new generation of architects and students became exhausted of living as Robinson Crusoe. Isolated from the rest of the world and successful attempts to apply arches, walls, and traditional elements to their projects. 
The catchphrase of the authorities was the Iranian Islamic identity. Instead, the youth were, youth were concerned about their identity as a member of the world community. Nostalgia for the future and what I named forward movement came as a reaction to conservatism and traditionalism of the authorities. However, during the past few years, something has been changed. The change started when 20 years ago, the intellectuals of the other nation became, began to pay attention to the Iranian contemporary art and literature. Iranian film directors such as Kiarostami were the first artists after the revolution to attract the attention of the international media. Then the work of Iranian painters and sculptors reached the international auctions. International customers paid up to 400 times the original price for the paintings and the sculptures. And then Iranian theater, music, literature achieved a similar success. Architecture was the last discipline to have a definite improvement. Recently, the new generation of the architects received a relative recognition from the international media. I mean, re magazines like Domus or sites like Design Boom, uh, Arc Daily, and so on. The Iranian architects realize that the other nations are not interested in observing the similarities between the Iranian and the international architects, but to see what's different in them. In such atmosphere, a few young architects started to see the traditions and the culture as an opportunity to create something different. And in their small works, they could achieve some interesting results. This approach was much deeper than the banal historicism of the state architecture. And this didn't come from a market demand, but it was a, the reverse of the metal, the, the metal, sorry, it was the reverse of the metal of the desire to be part of the world community. The tendency which, has, which I hear entitled Rewind means re-evaluation of the cultural heritage. A friend of mine says, I'm curious to learn how the Iranian architects of the past faced the problem of intense light during the hot seasons and how to resolve the problem of the reflections because today we are facing the same problem. The architects try to understand lessons from the history and from the traditions. Every culture has its dominant system of preferences. If you want to relate to the society and environment, you should not imitate the past, but study the reasons why some traditions and preferences exist. Some example. In the 19th century, the Western classic architecture was introduced in Iran. And so uh, some uh, traditional architects started to use them in their buildings. But among the different styles, you know, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian, style. The, the Iranian architects preferred the Corinthian style because they found it more similar to their style because it's floral. Now as an architect, instead of copying the floral motifs, I'm interested in discovering why the Iranians preferred floral ornaments. And today, what can substitute those ornaments in the contemporary buildings? We know that the best, richest, and the most exaggerated floral decorations in ceramic tiles, traditional carpets, and crafts are found in the hot and arid zones of Iran, near the desert, and not in the green regions near the Caspian Sea where the nature flourishes. Differently to Iranian architecture, the Japanese houses' interiors are austere and minimalist. Human being doesn't necessarily represent the natural environment in his work, but compensates what's lacking in the nature. Where outside is minimal, interior can be maximal and the other way around. The same in instinctive desire of balancing the environmental conditions in different territories leads to different architectural preferences. 
Neuroscience studies recently showed that what really matters is the overall degree of complexity of the natural and built environment that shall be get shall get close to an optimum point. This can be achieved in both traditional and contemporary way of doing architecture. Recently, a few architects started to study from a new and creative point of view the society, traditions, and history. This approach is not imitative, but creative. Even next office that I mentioned in other examples recently started a new trend. Its new projects show that the office has changed its directions. Guillaume House is an innovative composition of brick dooms that are at the same time formal and structural. Different to the traditional houses, Guillaume's facades are completely transparent and underline the tectonic essence of the building. In the building for the ceremonies, they create the same visual effect of the traditional pointed arch by carving the mass of the building instead of adding vaulted elements to the facade. Habibé Majdabadi is among the most talented architects of the Rewind movement. In her 40 Knots House, finalist of Aga Khan Award, the facade is a combination of traditional mashrabiya and a free-form brick pattern. In order to reach the quality of a tailored handicraft, instead of technical drawings during execution of the brick layers, she gave spoken instructions to the workers. This method is traditionally used by the carpet weavers in the carpet workshops. The master reads the drawings and tells to each weaver the kind of knots and color to be used in each pixel of the carpet. Beyond the aesthetic achievement in this way, the architect resolved a practical problem, lack of budget for producing the detailed design drawing and hiring skilled artisans. In her approximation house, the facade is a complex and movable 3D mesh made by thousands of wooden pieces that you see here. Each one differently shaped by the workers. The interior space provides several voids, openings and views. A strip of vegetation cuts the courtyard in two parts, climbs up the building up to the roof and penetrates into the indoor spaces. This is a natural way for mitigating the hot and arid climate of Tehran. And here we see these are all the wooden pieces. All of them are different. It's under construction, you see. Someone says that it seems a medieval castle, but... Her Ambed Lunar commercial complex, located on a highway far from the city of Gazvin, recalls both vernacular architecture and the morphology of the surrounding plain. Well, Mehrdad Iravanian has a personal approach to architecture. His buildings are conceived as art installation and move between art and architecture, construction and land art, tectonic and deconstruction. In his landmark for an industry of agriculture machinery, Iravanian integrates the obsolete industrial pieces into the buildings, creating an apocalyptic scenario. This is the restoration project for a textile factory converted to museum. And this is again something that seems a large scale installation. Well, these days, the most popular and famous building in the capital is the Tabiat Bridge. Its fame is partly to the huge dimensions and the strategic location of the bridge, which connects two important compounds, including parks, cultural buildings, sport and entertainment facilities. The multi-layer structure of the bridge is not just the means of transition, but a place to stay. There are several panoramic terraces, cafes and restaurants. In this work, the architects make a clear reference to the historical bridges of Isfahan that had similar functions. They were public spaces and bridges at the same time. Since several years ago, Puyah Khazali passes major part of his life in small villages near desert. For him, learning from vernacular architecture means finding practical solutions within natural, entirely recyclable, and cheap material. 
Where the soil is the only material in hand of architect, he uses the sun brick dried bricks. The material itself suggests the construction method and consequently the forms. Although his work is experimental, is still experimental, through many workshops and courses, he's trying to draw attention of the young generation designers to the potentialities offered by the cheap and vernacular material. Farshad Mehdizadeh, whose university thesis was about architecture and improvisation, has a singular approach to design. In his projects, most of the effort is dedicated to revise the design brief of the client, and for this reason, constantly put at risk his contracts. In his first part of career, he focused on the new tectonics and believed each material suggests a technology and each technology leads to a certain family of forms. In his recent projects, he reached to the conclusion that events create space. By term event, he intends the way people occupy and use the space. He says, at night, a traditional Iranian bazaar is a monotonous complex of corridors. And during the working hours, every corner has atmosphere, color, light, and even smell. Qom is a city whose economy depends on pilgrimage and traditional trade. In his project for a commercial center in the center of Qom, Mehdi Zadeh argues the plan of the client for building a conventional commercial center. He proposes a complex set of cell-type spaces that recall the traditional bazaar. In his dreamland, winner of World Architecture Festival Award, he has transformed the initial project brief of designing facades for an existing structure to a brand new project created within the limitation in, imposed by the pre-existing. I believe any society needs functional and nice-looking buildings, and visionary architecture can jeopardize the performance, time, budget of a project. However, progress requires investment and experimentation. Science and technology understand this well. Architectures, clients, less. I don't know how will it be the world 50 years later. Similarly, 50 years ago, people couldn't imagine how would it be today. Our father's vision of future determined our present time. These days, the, architect the ideas are constantly evolving. It seems our project for future will contain DNA of the past. The recent Pritzker Award given to Balkrishna Doshi from India may confirm this statement. Both forward and rewind are necessary if we want things work in future. Thank you very much.